All right, you're watching the Fat Bidin Film Club and listening to the Fat Bidin Film Club. Film Club. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. And I'm Aiz Azli. And uh, today we're going to talk about a new documentary film that will be... Road. It's called Road to Nationhood, Journey to Independence. <laughs> So we got invited to a close screening of the film uh, before it's actually being premiered on TV. Yes. And it's going to be premiered very soon, right? And we, the details are this. Okay, so this is the first two, two parts of the series, a five-year series until 2020 called yeah. Road to Nationhood by Rack Focus, directed by Ahmad Yazid. Yes. Uh, and, uh, it's a huge team. It's a huge research team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 it's, it's pretty, pretty pretty detailed uh, It's it's about uh, le- the 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 how say the events leading up to the how Luka. the country was built. Yeah. So the, this, the entire this particular, this particular year, yeah, this, yeah. because it, the two episodes per year until twenty twenty. Yeah. Right. So this is the first two episodes. It's how Malaysia came to independence. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it primarily follows. Uh, Oh, I'm going to say Jaffa on <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> uh, On Jaffa lah yeah, yeah, yeah So as you can You can Kind of Feel or assume That this is a very Factual Very historically Detailed documentary yeah. Which it is Because it took them Two years to do Yeah that's crazy man Two yeah. years Yeah uh, Oh Yeah and it cost a lot also But it's a good thing that They kind of work together With NST To get their archives Mm. Right, and apparently they have good archives. Uh. So if you watch the film, it's a lot of archival footage. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, you, you would think that there's not much new to say about the story, but it's the way it's pre- the narrative it presents, lah. Mm. It's not particularly uh, the conventional narrative, lah. It is kind of conventional to me. It's very chronological, no, and it's, it's told co- in a, in in a factual and also anecdotal way. Of people who were there, or people who knew the people who were there. No, the the the, the so it's a pretty conventional story. Straight yeah. away from convention, I'm talking about the particular history that, that we learn. The particular history that, that they're talking about, uh-huh. because uh, it's primarily following uh, uh, on Jaffa's uh, huh? story. struggle. Uh-huh. Yeah, struggle. Yep. And even when uh, but these are stories that everybody to Abdul Rahman. It's uh-huh. very. It's still very. Uh, the portrayal is very very dynamic in the character la, like like uh-huh. he's a particular way okay, instead of okay, like, like okay. the the the, the uh, being painted like a complete hero. Right, 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 right. You know? But it shows it shows a multifaceted yeah. like, of the of the characters yeah, involved in the story la. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's what I mean. Because most of the time when you talk about like uh, when you talk about these Madeka stories uh-huh. It's mo- most of the time It's, it's very political be, Yeah It's going to be very yeah. It's going to be No no it's okay No problem Most of the time When you're talking about uh, A Madeka Story yeah. uh. It's going to be very oh, uh, Malay Chinese Indian uh, To quote Rahman's The, the boss mm. And uh, this wasn't exactly like that lah. It's it feels more ah, yeah la. more it, it feels more human la. Yeah, it feels more human. It feels yeah. a, like a very human story la. And for me, as a person that um, did very poorly in school in, with in history, uh, like I feel more engaged in, with, yeah. with this particular type of storytelling because like even though I know. Uh, you kind of know what the, happens, right? Everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I know yeah. what happens, but but it engages you, uh. Yeah. Makes me feel like Oh yeah I'm relearning this hmm. um, Yeah And Yeah lah Our Senior On ground correspondent Spoke to <laughs> Yazid Spoke to Yazid So over to you Aizil Okay so we're here with uh, The director Yazid And uh, Yeah just a quick one lah I'm actually quite interested in uh, Knowing how you guys decided on What uh, Would be considered important to highlight in the movie because uh, I could relate with what you said about um, not really having learned it in school mm. properly well mm. technically it was, it was in the syllabus mm. 
but I didn't learn it until after I left mm. school. Okay. I didn't do very well in yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. So like, how do you determine like what context level mm. to this uh, to to tell this story? I think we always have an idea, right? Like how what kind of stories or what kind of stuff we want to say. Um, uh, some, but what I like about documentary is the decision is not totally ours. And I like that the fact that the nature takes its course. What I mean by the nature takes its course is that the, the story will determine what I can or cannot tell. Uh, not that I've been censored, it's just the story, does it fit the narrative? You know, if you're talking about the story of Merdeka, then there's no point of talking about Singapore. Um, and um, you know, or there is a point talking about Singapore, but there's no point talking about uh, the independence of uh, Burma, for example. You know, it's off ten, off the topic, right, or like off the narrative, um, unless the Burmese independence inspired some Malaysian, just like the India in here. So uh, yeah, we we I, I did have an idea what the story should be about, but it's always the course has always changed. Like, and then this is completely different to what I thought first right. first time what it should be. And I enjoy that as a filmmaker. I enjoy the unsuspecting story. So and un, uh, those, uh, those surprise, um, how do you say it? those uh, unsuspecting stories? You know that popped up along the way and it molds the story to itself. And you know I, and then uh, another part of my, you know another another team member will come in and give some views, and it becomes a collective work. I love that. Say like. Because uh, doc- like I, I, from watching this documentary, I'm assuming that the uh, intention is to inform the viewers, mm. and like, how do you guesstimate like what would be redundant knowledge? Like, like, like oh, this is something that people already know. I could skip this, and then like, mm. this is the the sweet spot of like okay. new information. Uh, mm. But I, I, I was, uh, you know, history, the history of Malaysia itself was not, uh, the history of Merdeka itself was not really familiar to me when I started it. So I didn't really know what the sweet spots were. I knew that the story of a acting chief minister disobeying his sultan would be a good story. Right. Uh, a good story of, not just a good story of, of, of this rebellion, not rebellion, but it was just something that it was, it, it, something that he didn't believe. So why would he do, why would he make that decision? Uh, why would he agree to a decision that is against what he believe, what his belief? You know, his belief is, is to be with the other chief ministers, and then um, you know, uh, so those. Uh, uh, so I thought that was great. No one has heard it before. Okay, and you can call it a sweet spot. But there were tough stuff that you know you kind of know lah. You kind of know that you know, Tunku came back from uh, and then came back and he declared the first time in Malacca on the twentieth of February, nineteen fifty-six. And then, um, you know, and you knew that uh, the independence was called in Stadium Merdeka. And you knew that uh, a lot of people knew that the Merdeka mission happened. And a lot of people knew about the Baling talks. So we still tackle it. But, right. um, and, and we want to tackle it in a way that I hope that someone from Hong Kong watch it and, and never heard of anything about Malaya would still resonate with the, the cause. So we still would resonate with the, with the fight. Or with the with the um, uh, yeah with the fight of, of freedom of a country through this through uh, through journey to independence. Mm. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Thanks, guys. Back to you, Aizil. <laughs> All right. So that was what Yazid said. Yeah. <laughs> Look, um, uh, it it to me the documentary made me feel like uh, like like it really happened. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because instead of yeah, without a, without the story being told this way, it was it's like something so detached, something yeah. that you know, it, it's just words in a in a book. Yeah, like this idea of you a know? social contract and everything. Yeah, we know. We know, but, but you it think that it's so just bizarre. something in a book. Yeah, but now you feel like it's it actually happened. Yeah, like like yeah, you, you see like pictures of buildings that exist to stay exist today that you feel like you so dirty now. Yeah. But then at, the, at some point in time in <laughs> the past the it was like with <laughs> stickers on it you know for along numbers at, at you know. some point in the past it was used for like real things real things <laughs> significant things significant things <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so 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 I think I urge everybody to watch the documentary yeah 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 it provides enough footage for you to feel like oh yeah those things you read in the in history books actually happen la. <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah so that's it lah yeah right. check it out lah on yeah. these dates 
<laughs> okay, so if you like this uh, episode, please share it with everybody you know. If you don't like this episode, please share it with everybody you know and torture them. Uh, follow us on all our social media platforms at FatBidin or go to our website to get everything, fatbidin.com. That's right. Yep, so uh, you've been watching and listening to the Fat Bidin Film Club and I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. And I am Aizel Azli. Okay, so uh, Selamat Merdeka.